In this video, we'll explore how we can use the WKB method to estimate uh, the lifetime of particles confined to a potential well. So the situation to consider is illustrated in this figure. We have a particle of mass M with total energy capital E. And uh, in, such, in such a way that it doesn't have enough energy uh, classically to overcome the potential barrier. So uh, this little uh, bump over here, so that it is uh, confined to be between uh, x being larger than a and x being smaller than b. Okay, so uh, you can say classically, the particle is confined to the region between A and B. Once it reaches this point, you would expect it to fall back down, reach this point and continue back and forth if there's no friction. Uh, quantum mechanically, we know that the particle can actually tunnel through the barrier and find its way out to uh, this region when X is larger than C we would like to uh, estimate the lifetime, which we'll call tau, uh, that the particle, uh, or the lifetime being the time that the particle spends in this region. Okay, so in other words, the time, loosely speaking, the time it takes for it to go from this region over to this region. Okay, so uh, we know that the transmission probability is given by uh, T in the WKB regime this would be e to the minus two integral across the barrier. So from B to C of kappa x dx. And this you can think of it as the transmission probability of when the particle is over here, what's the probability that it successfully transitions through the barrier. We're going to define a couple of quantities. Uh, we're going to let eta be uh, the tunneling probability per unit time, or in other words, the uh, the tunneling rate, and we're going to define this capital P of T as the probability that the particle is still in this region between A and B. What this means then is if we're interested in the probability that at time T plus delta T that the particle is still between A and B, this is equal to the probability that at time t, the particle was between a and b times the probability that the particle did not tunnel in this time dt, during this time dt. This probability is one minus the probability that it did tunnel within that time. So this will be given by one minus eta dt. Since this is the probability of tunneling per unit time, when you multiply by, uh, sorry, it should be delta t. When you multiply by time, this just gives you a probability uh, that it's tunneled during that time interval. 
distributing this and bringing, uh, reorganizing this equation a little bit. You get the t plus delta t minus pt is equal to minus eta pt delta t. Bringing this over to this side, we get that uh, an expression that's looking very close to a derivative. So we're going to take the limit where delta t is very, very small. So this becomes the time derivative of pt. This is equal to minus mm -hmm. eta pt. So we're left with a first order separable differential equation that is easy to solve. We get that this is uh, a decaying exponential function in time. So the more we wait, the less likely we are to find the particles still confined between A and B, and this probability decays exponentially. Uh, this allows us to identify the lifetime tau as being equal to one over the tunneling rate uh, of, of the particle. So what we're left with then is if we wanna figure out the lifetime of this particle, we need to figure out what the tunneling rate is. And to do that, we're going to take a semi-classical picture. So we're going to assume that this is a classical particle for which we expect it to be rolling uh, back and forth in this region. We're going to uh, denote by R the frequency at which the particle reaches this point. Uh, so I'll, I'll write that down. Okay, so R is the frequency at which the particle reaches point B. The reason we're interested in that is because we had to find our transmission probability to be the probability that when the particle is over here, it tunnels through the barrier. Another way of thinking of this is um, since it's a frequency, it's the uh, number of time the particle hits, so to speak, the point x equals to b per unit time. What this means then is uh, the inverse of this, of one over r, which we'll call delta t, This is the part, the time that the particle takes to go from uh, B to A and back to B. So it's it's uh, basically the, the frequency at which it goes from here to point A and back to point B. So it's the oscillating frequency, if if you would. Since we know uh, that the, the distance traveled is equal to the velocity times time, then this delta t is also equal to, so uh, the time it takes to go from a to b is the integral dx over vx, where b is the velocity, because we want to know uh, the time taken to go from a to b from b to a and back to to b we want twice this quantity because it has to make the one the first integral gives us the time it takes to go from here to here we want the time it takes to go from here to here back to here and that's just twice the amount of time 
uh, we can express this in terms of the momentum by multiplying top and bottom by the mass. Okay, so we again encounter this notion of uh, local momentum, which is a semi-classical uh, fabrication that's useful to us at the moment. What all this means then is the tunneling rate, which we're calling eta, is uh, it's given by this uh, this frequency or th yeah this frequency of a particle reaching B times the probability that it gets transmitted every time it reaches B. So this is uh, R. TWKB. Okay, again, this is just saying that the tunneling rate is equal to the rate at which the particle finds itself at x equals to b times the probability that when it's at x equals b, it successfully tunnels through the barrier. And this we said was uh, one over the lifetime of the particle. What this means then is the lifetime of the particle is delta t over t w k b. Delta t we said was equal to this integral. And our transmission probability according to WKB was given by this. Notice here we're integrating within the range of the barrier from B to C over here. Whereas for the time we're integrating in uh, the potential well, well that the particle is initially in. So between A and B. So for TWKB we get E to the two Kappa X. Okay, so we're left with our final result that the lifetime of a particle confined in a potential well is generally given by uh, this equation. And again, here at the bounds of integration, you should keep uh, this picture in mind. A to B is inside the first classical region. B to C is inside the classically forbidden region. Uh, this is the classically allowed, classically forbidden, and then classically allowed region. In the special case where um, P of X doesn't depend on X, so you have uh, just a constant velocity. Uh, we'll say P naught and we'll call this P naught. Then the lifetime It's just given by this expression. Okay, we can, uh, if you want to just uh, have this in terms of the velocity. Then uh, our life, our expression for the lifetime of a particle, this is P naught, this is a velocity. Uh, or really the, the speed, because it's not a vector, of the particle in the first uh, classically allowed region. So this is useful, for example, in calculating the lifetime of uh, radioactive decay of a certain nuclei. 
And it can be used, for example, in, in using uh, Gamow's theory of alpha decay to estimate uh, the rate of radioactive emission in, uh, in uranium-238, for example. 